So, uh, it dinged there, and I started like right before the ding. So let's make sure <laughs> to have optimal awkwardness on the recording. Yeah, cool. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, cool. man. I'm. I, we're also excited to to hear what you got to to tell us about web scraping. Yeah. Cool. So, um, hey, I'm Shane. Uh, I teach with Four Geeks Academy, uh, and I've been doing uh, full stack web development for long enough that uh, um, it, it actually makes me feel old at this point. Um, but I, uh, I one of the one of the skills that I I've uh, gained over my career because I, I spent a lot of time in e-commerce. Um, one of the skills I gained was um, was web scraping, which is kind of one of these um, these things that isn't like super glamorous, but a lot of companies are doing it to because like the way that you get big data is you need to collect the data from the internet, and it's a lot easier if you don't have to go manually clicking through web pages and uh, and all of that. So all these companies are doing web scraping. Um, and really all web scraping is doing is you're having a program go visit websites and get the information you need from those websites. Um, some of the absolute worst code that I've written has been in web scrapers. Um, so it is uh, worth noting that, you know, um, here, let me actually pull up a, uh, a piece of production code uh, that I wrote. This is the code comments and all. Um, so, you know, web scraping has some things that can be a little bit complicated because you're, you're navigating web pages without being able to really see it. Um, and then sometimes you just need to structure the data in weird ways. And you were a junior dev at this point and uh, you are still vaguely uh, appalled by what you wrote. Um, I actually went back and cleaned this up last night uh, because some students were uh, some students were asking about this. So, cool. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, there are a couple things to uh, to keep in mind. One is I have set up a test website for this. You guys are welcome to use that as a way to test out scraping um, or to try it out for learning scraping. It'll be up for a couple of days. Um, If you're going to be doing any large-scale automated web scraping, check with your ISP. Um, it would really suck for your ISP to, to shut you off because you broke their terms of service. Um, I wouldn't recommend calling up their support and saying, hey, I want to do web scraping. What can I do? I'd recommend looking at your the, the terms of service for your, uh, your ISP. Um, second, while web scraping is completely legal, uh, it can be very rude, and if you take down somebody's website with your web scraper because you're making a thousand requests a second, um, people might get mad and a little bit litigious. So, you know, be careful. Make sure that you rate limit your bots or rate, rate limit your web scrapers. Um, we're going to be doing this seminar in Python, um, and the website that I've set up for this is... Um, this website full of excellent recipes, filling recipes, and filler text. So, cool. I'm going to drop a couple links into the chat for you. Uh, first is the template that I'm going to be using. And the second is the website that we're going to be scraping. Um, because once again, I've set this up. If you guys take it down, uh, first of all, That'll be uh, wonderful. And second of all, eh, DigitalOcean probably won't get super mad at me. Uh, and the third thing is, uh, because I have clicked into the wrong tab, uh, this lesson is kind of built off of Al Swigart's um, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, which is how I learned Python. So highly recommend this. Uh, it is a good read. It has lots of interesting projects, uh, and it is completely free online. So uh, we're specifically working off of um, uh, chapter 12. So, Ooh, 
Uh, so, uh, one second. Let's let's actually use this template instead of. Uh, do, do, do. Let's just delete this. Cool. So, uh, if you're a Four Geeks Academy student, um, you can use uh, use this template, and you will have access to your free uh, code space hours. Otherwise, you can open it in a code space. Uh, or you can create a new repository on your own account and open it in a new code space. Um, uh, yeah. So it's the use this template button on the top right corner. Uh, if you're a 4 Geeks Academy student, use the 4 Geeks Academy owner. Uh, and make sure that you, you know, you put a good repository name in it. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, See, this is awesome. Uh, if you're not a student, just make it under your own account. You get, uh, I think, about 40 hours of free code space hours uh, a month. So, uh, to, to do, create a code space on main. And then I need to zoom this in. Uh, because the uh, the screen share window is honestly kind of small. Man, I should have started this code space before the seminar so I didn't have to wait through this. Okay. So there are a couple of things I'm going to go over ahead of time. Uh, first of all, I've already set up a pip file where I've in installed a couple of useful packages. The first one that we're going to be using is called requests. Requests allows us to make HTTP requests from a Python script. Um, I'm using Markdownify to convert HTML into Markdown files. And then the important one is beautiful soup four. This package is what allows us to interact with HTML in a sensible manner. So we're going to be pulling things from um, the website and then we'll be able to turn them into actually useful stuff for us. Uh, in this case, we want an automated way to pull these recipes from this website or without the the filler text, without the, the placeholder images, so on and so forth. Really all we care about is this. Um, if we wanted to, we could actually turn that into a data structure if we knew enough about the website. Uh, that would allow us to, you know, do data science to our recipes. Um, but honestly, uh, I'm more inclined to cook the recipes at this point. Cool. Honestly, our first um, our first step is we should open up the inspector, and we should go to a recipe because we kind of need to understand the structure of the page. Um, and we could also go to like site settings because we're going to be using B, uh, BS4 or Beautiful Suit 4 um, instead of uh, Selenium, uh, which we'll touch on later more, in more detail as a uh, kind of an upgrade from uh, BS4. Uh, Beautiful Soup doesn't parse JavaScript. So when we load the page with BS4 or when we interact with the page with BS4, it'll be a static page. Um, there, none of these JavaScript stuff will work or none of this JavaScript will work. Um, so this script here uh, isn't going to do anything. Uh, thankfully, I made a very simple website for this demo and it doesn't have any essential JavaScript. Um, it is worth noting that uh, in a lot of situations, you may be able to actually figure out what the JavaScript is loading without the JavaScript running, but, you know, 
that is that is uh, advanced uh, web scraping. Um, and frankly, at that point, you really should just be using Selenium instead of uh, hacking together something. So I'm going to use this uh, this button up here to allow me to select elements on the page. Uh, and it looks like everything that we want in this recipe is in this element. So, uh, and and the, mm. okay, that's, uh, there's an empty div here called with the ID recipe. Um, but the div that we actually want here, the one that actually contains the recipe, uh, has this ID WPRM recipe container 24. Um, honestly, we should go check out one of the other recipes and see see what that looks like. So again, we'll go. We'll select this. Okay. So we've got WPRM recipe container fifty two. So we've got an ID for this page or for this um, for the the div that actually contains the recipe. Um, and we've got kind of like a, a pattern that we can use to to see what a recipe looks like on each of these pages. Which honestly, this is a good time to for me to actually like take a note about this. Uh, so that's W R that's W P R M dash recipe dash container dash the ID of the recipe. Cool. Uh, and that seems to be uh, how it how it works in every case. So we've got that or we've we've got some of the the precursors for our website or not for our website for a web scraper we know what we're looking for on a page um we just need to actually get that now cool so let's let's import requests Our first library, uh, just so that we can actually get the information that we need from this website, uh, is requests. Um, I've already installed it. Uh, if you're running, you know, this doesn't have the startup script. So let's actually install this uh, extension. I miss this. And then we want to do pip env install just in case that uh that hasn't done it already yep we actually need our virtual environment okay let's hop over here uh and we'll add a setup node uh do, do, do. This is going to be bash uh, pip env install. And did I write a script? Yeah. And then do, do, do. running the script will be pip env run start uh, scrape. I did that to myself. Cool. I'm just taking notes. I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't written the scraper for this website. I've, I've tested the bits and pieces of this uh, ahead of time, uh, but I haven't actually uh, built the scraper for this website. So let's hop over here to the uh, console and let's clear this out and let's run this script. Uh, the script so you can see what it does right now. 
uh, because it definitely doesn't scrape the website. All it does is prints hello world to the console. Um, I'm going to actually swap over to... Hmm. Much better. Cool. I'm going to swap over to the correct uh, environment here. Um, if you're following along, what you're looking for is you want an environment that has Pippi and V in it. Uh, you may need to refresh the interpreter list um, to see that after you've done the Pippi and V install. Um, cool. So we've got our requests. Uh, we want to be able to. Uh, I'm going to just hard code this initially uh, as I lose track of which tab. I'm going to pin this one. That seems like a good idea. So uh, let's make a variable to hold the recipe URL just for now. And then we'll we'll make a request. So we'll do uh, response is equal to request.get recipe URL. We don't really need to make any uh, any big changes to that. This returns a requests.response. And then we can, instead of printing hello world, we can print a response. When we run pip env run scrape, we're going to get a response object out here. We're kind of hitting a point though, where we are going to want some better tools to, we're actually definitely going to uh, hit a point in the very, very near future, where we actually want to have some better tools for understanding what's going on in the program and understanding what variables look like. So we're going to hop over here to this run and debug, and we're going to create a launch.json uh, file. We're going to select the Python debugger, uh, and we're going to run a or have it set up so that we run the current file. Um, frankly, that should probably be enough for what we have now. So, uh, if I run the debugger, uh, yeah, it runs everything just fine but we want to actually be able to see what this response is. So over here on the left side of our main.py, uh, right next to the line where we're printing the response, I'm going to click to add a breakpoint. Um, this breakpoint is going to suspend the program there. It's going to prevent it from uh, running any further. And we're going to have the ability to see what our variables are right at this very, uh, very moment. So if I mouse over name here, we see that the value of name is main. Um, and let's do that real quick. If I mouse over response, we can see that it has a whole bunch of information that we want. Um, and if I expand this bar over here, uh, we can actually do that without having to mouse over things, which is honestly super nice. So the thing that we kind of really care about here is this text, um, which uh, it's going to be kind of hard to, to see um, because there is, uh, frankly, a huge amount of text in here. But that looks exactly like an HTML document to me. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to uh, continue through the execution of this program. So our response here has a text property. We can actually figure this out if we, uh, if we look over here. Actually, no, we need to look at a response object. Yeah, it doesn't really tell us there. But we need to actually be able to understand this HTML document. 
uh, beautiful C++ Python. Okay, so beautiful soup uh, doesn't really have the best documentation, unfortunately. Um, but we kind of really where we want to go look at it is um, we want to understand making the soup. And then we're going to want to understand searching the tree for stuff. So what the what uh, BS4 is going to do for us um, I'm actually just going to import BS4 as I hit control W instead of control T um, good for me uh, let's see import BS4 this is going to take a hot second to find its brain um, but yeah, basically what what beautiful soup uh, lets us do is it allows us to interact with um, a web page kind of in a very similar manner to uh, how we can interact it with uh, or interact with a web page with uh, query selectors. Like um, let actually const recipe equals document dot query selector pound this if I look at if I print recipe to the the command line here we get this element from the uh, from the page um, and the browser is smart enough that um, it it will actually highlight this when I mouse over it. Um, honestly, this feature didn't always exist in browsers. It's great. I love it. Um, BS4 allows us to uh, to make soup from a um, from an HTML document, or to to turn the HTML document into something that we can do the same thing with. So, our soup. Is going to be BS four dot beautiful soup, um, and that's going to be equal to BS four dot beautiful soup from our response dot text. Cool, and we're going to print the soup, and we're going to make a breakpoint here for the soup. And I back over to the debugger, and let's look at the soup. Uh, the word soup is rapidly approaching a point where it has no more meaning, uh, by the way. Cool. So we've got this really big object here. Uh, it includes a whole bunch of things. Uh, it includes, let's see, I saw the CSS here. It includes a CSS object for all the styles on this. Um, let's see, there should be, we don't care about the parents here, uh, because there is none. Um, we've got a, uh, so we've got a list of the children of the HTML document, uh, which is, uh, a handful of nodes, including a uh, an HTML tag, which we can actually just navigate down through this. Hmm. Except that uh, children is a list iterator, which is one spot where the debugger doesn't really help us a huge amount, um, which is unfortunate. But well, we'll step through the execution of this. So yeah. We've got this. Uh, we've got this magical object here that I promise you will actually let us understand this. Um, uh, this uh, this website or interact with this website in Python. So cool. Uh, we're let's see. Let's find. Uh, 
Let's see, we don't want to find it with a function. Uh, did we have an ID at some point? String kind of filters. Let's. Okay, cool. So we've got this find function. Um, there's also the find all function, which will give us an array of things. Um, let's see. Maybe navigating the tree. No, we don't really want to navigate the tree. Like, uh, that. Yeah, searching the tree is probably the, uh, Uh, probably how we want to go about this. Um, we need to find something with an ID that matches kind of what we're looking for. And probably the best way to do that is going to be um, using regular expressions um, so that we can pattern match. Uh, regular expressions are not super hard or easy to read, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, let's um, let's try to find the recipe. So our recipe is going to be uh, equal to soup dot find, uh, and we want to find something with a regex string that uh, let's grab this that looks uh, kind of like this needs to be a raw string kind of like this um, and we know that this is going to end in numbers so but we've only ever seen two numbers. So we'll put in a number character here. Um, and we'll say that we want to match that number character between uh, one and an unlimited number of times. So if we take this recipe here and we run our program again, let's look at our our recipe. Our recipe came back with none. Let's see. Do, do, do. No parser is explicitly stated. Yeah. Oh, do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's step through this because none is not what we're expecting. So, probably because the find function where you're doing regex is probably just looking at the tag nodes. So, find by ID. Let's see, CSS selectors. There. Okay, so we want the select. Um, hmm. I wonder if we can find by partial IDs. Because that would be incredibly nifty. Because we don't know what our ID exactly looks like. Um, and I don't want to do the really fancy way of okay, that's closest ancestor. A match function matches a given tag with a given CSS selector. Hmm, that is unfortunate. Let's find a better way to identify this. It's got W. PRM recipe container as a class. 
So what if we did soup dot select? Uh, we'll do select one because we know that there's only one element in the page. And w that was prm recipe contain container. Let me just double check that. Yeah. So we're going to use CSS selector here. And let's try this again. Let's run this and let's see if recipe is uh, is actually something. Uh, yeah, cool. Recipe is actually a, um, a BS4 tag now. Um, I think. Let's see. Do, do, do. Let's see. It's not known XML. Uh, I want here hey, attributes. Yeah, this is the right container. It's got the right ID for us. Uh, let's see if I can get the yeah. And if we look at the contents here, uh, we've got a uh, a lot of text in there. So cool. We can actually select a single element from a page. Um, and we're honestly, we're a, a pretty good uh, chunk of the way to being able to get one recipe and turn it into a markdown file for us. So what we need to do now is this is going to be uh, BS4 dot tag, or it's going to be none. There we go. Um, and we want to look at what the recipe, ha uh, not recipe URL, recipe dot. Let's see, recipe dot get text. That seems promising. We'll try that. Okay, that's a method. Let's try recipe.txt. Um, we don't have any breakpoints, so let's just run this. Hmm, that is missing some stuff that we need. Is there HTML? What happens, actually, what happens if I print the recipe just as a string? Is that what we need? Perfect, that is exactly what we need. So let's, our next step is now that we have the HTML is we want to actually make a markdown file. So we're going to need to cover some stuff real fast. Python has, um, Python can write files to your, um, uh, to your file system basically. So what I'm going to do is with open, um, the current directory slash recipes slash recipe dot md as uh, to recipe file. Um, give me one second. Sorry. Uh, I live on a uh, relatively busy street in my town, and it happens to be the street that um, the fire department has to go by to respond to fires. So, sorry for the background noise there. Cool. So, we are going to open a recipe file here. I'm just going to put pass here. That's just uh, That just means continue on with the execution of the program, because I forgot one important thing is we need to... Uh, have a second argument to this open function, and that is the mode in which we're opening the file. So we're opening a file in recipes called recipe.md in write text mode. And let's uh, recipe file dot write our recipe. And we'll run this file. It's not in Markdown yet. Ah, it must be a string. So 
Let's convert this to a string. And we'll run this again. Cool. We'll clear the console. We'll open this up. And we've got the HTML from our page. Um, frankly, there are a lot of the very big um, uh, SVG images in this. So it's not really, it's not in a state that we can use this. I would not want to put this up on my computer screen and read this recipe. So we need to use Markdownify. I'm going to grab the documentation for this. Um, Markdownify. Uh, no, this is a Django Markdownify. Markdownify. Uh, homepage. Thank you. Cool. So we're going to want to import uh, a function called Markdownify. They recommend uh, importing it as um, as MD. So let's see. We're going to do that, and we'll Markdownify our recipe, and we'll run this again. And let's go look at our our recipe. Let's open the preview, and suddenly we have something that looks like a, a useful piece of, uh, I mean, it's got some stuff in it we don't want, like, we don't want this print recipe button, but we could extract that later. Cool. So we can manually scrape one recipe, which is useful. Um, also, it definitely isn't uh, handling this particularly well, but, you know, we can fix that. Uh, just probably not right now. Yeah. Cool. We can scrape one recipe. Um, we really want to make this automated. So let's... Let's take this and abstract it out into some functions. So we'll define scrape recipe uh, to be a function that takes a recipe uh, URL, which is going to be a string. And it's going to output a string. And then we'll put our function in here, and we'll return our string recipe. Cool. So now we can do uh, recipe equals uh, scrape recipe. And we can take our URL. Um, and we've already abstracted out a bunch of the complexity. But let's make it real easy, and we'll define write recipe. This is going to take a recipe HTML, which is, again, it's going to be a string. Uh, and this is going to not return anything. Uh, so this function is not going to have a return statement. Uh, it's going to just take this, take our recipe HTML, convert, um, it no longer needs to convert it to a string. So honestly, let's just simplify this a little bit. Cool. Um, and we also want it to take a recipe name, which will be a string as well. So we can uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so let's see, this will be write recipe. The word recipe stopped looking like a 
a word. Uh, and we're going to say that's going to take name and HTML. Uh, we're going to have red squiggly underlines for a second. Uh, do, do, do. I'm actually going to update this to be a to output a tuple, uh, and it's going to return some sort of string and the recipe string or the the HTML string. Cool. So we've got. Uh, what we're doing here is because this is returning a tuple, um, we're destructuring that tuple here into a variable called name, which is going to be this first return value, and a variable called HTML, which is going to be this return value. We're going to need some way here to find the name of the recipe, or at least guess at the name of the recipe. So we head back here. We're going to close the body of this. Um, and we're going to go look at the HTML again. We've got the title, which has the recipe name in here, um, which we can probably uh, we can probably extract that nicely. Uh, we can check to see if there are any meta tags that include uh, what we need, we can actually check here in the app, the, the script, which has the type application slash LD plus JSON. Um, and we can probably find the recipe name in there. Uh, but we'd have to do some extra stuff because this, yeah, like actually this has the name right here. It's right in here. Um, but parsing this LD plus JSON thing to actually get the name of the file um, is going to be probably outside the scope of what we have. So we're going to make a note here um, that we could um, we could get the recipe name from the uh, structured data. Uh, but we're going to use the title instead for brevity. Cool. So we've got our title tag here. Uh, in this case, it's it looks like this. So what we're going to want as the output for this recipe is that as the title. Cool. Um, we can see that there is a separator between the recipe and this. So let's find that. So title is going to be a bs4.tag again. Um, or none, because we could hypothetically not have a title on a page. It'd be really weird. Uh, it's going to be equal to soup dot select one again. And we're just going to use the title selector. And then title, we're going to convert it to a string here is going to be equal to a string of title. And then we're going to try to split it. Uh, it's not going to be a string. Uh, it's going to be a list of strings. Cool. OK. So we're going to return title and recipe here. And honestly, we can just uh, do this again for brevity. That's going to continue to be highlighted. But let's go look at what the title looks like now. 
I'm going to toss the breakpoint here. So when we run this function, uh, we'll have this breakpoint will be inside the scope of this function. And cool. Um, okay, it's not quite what we want. We have the entirety of the HTML there. And what we want is titled up text because we don't want the HTML structure there. Cool. Um, let's. I definitely put my um, my breakpoint in the wrong spot. So we'll jump over this. We'll go here. We will put the breakpoint here because. I moved the the actual converting it to uh, here. Um, so let's actually run this and let's look at what name is. The special variables, no, man. Name is any, HTML is any. Hmm. Okay. Move the breakpoint to here, maybe. Do, 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 do. Hey, there it is. Okay. So name is a, an array that contains a bloquet, except it's got a space at the end. And then Shane's excellent recipes as the second element. Cool. Uh, honestly, we're going to actually just uh, do, do, do string title is going to be equal to this, the first element of that array, uh, which is going to be this Avlikea string. And then we want to uh, dot r strip. Uh, our strip is just a function that uh, takes the um, that takes white space off the end of it. Uh, let's run this again and let's go look at what name is. Cool. Name is just Ablekea. Awesome. We'll kill this program. Um, and I did some some fancy stuff here way back when I wrote that open function, I made this into an F string. An F string allows you to uh, put Python into the string. So we can put the recipe name into this string and the squiggly braces here and everything inside them will be interpreted as Python. So when I run this now and we go look here, we can go to our recipes and there's an ablikea.markdown now. Cool. So now we've got a generic piece of code that will go and actually take our recipes um, or will work hypothetically on any recipe page. Um, and it will write a markdown file with the recipe. So all we need now is to be able to do this in an automated manner without uh, having to go and manually uh, change this line 23. Um, yeah, so yeah, we just need, we need an automated way to do this. So let's hop over here um, and let's reset permissions because we don't really care about JavaScript at the moment. And I'm going to introduce you to two new parts of the website. Um, I'm going to visit them in separate pages so that we have access to both. The first is robots.txt. Robots.txt is a file that you really should read and parse if you are going to scrape a website. Your bot should follow the rules in this. So in this case, uh, it's allowing any user agent but it does not allow scraping on WP admin, WP includes, uh, trackback, 
WP login and WP register.php. Um, robots.txt will not enforce anything, but this line is incredibly useful. This website has a sitemap. It's listed in the robots.txt. So we can visit that sitemap and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the sitemap. Uh, it is what's called an XML file. Uh, XML was the, and still is in many situations, the de facto way to actually um, store, to share data over the internet. Um, in this day and age, you'll see JSON a lot more. Um, JSON files are in ways easier to read. Um, yeah, yeah, JSON files are usually, like, I like JSON better than I like XML, but the sitemap.xml is standard. So it's probably not changing anytime soon. Um, and what the sitemap is, is the sitemap is just a list of pages in a website that you can scrape or that you can you can visit. Uh, search engines use sitemap.xml to build um, to build or to, to actually find pages on on a website. Um, and coincidentally, uh, this URL set has four different URLs. Each of them has a location, and each of them is a uh, recipe. So we need to have some tool to um, to parse a um, a sitemap. Uh, and coincidentally, this is built into Python. Um, It's using the element tree or the e tree API. And yeah. So honestly, let's um let's go and we'll write a quick function to uh def uh read robots txt. Uh it's going to take a site URL, which is going to be a string. Um, and it's going to output, it's not going to return anything at the moment because I haven't really decided how we're going to do this. So, uh, let's visit the site URL. So our response, um, which is going to be a request dot response, um, is going to be equal to request dot get. Um, we'll do the site URL slash robots.txt. Um, and we're going to want to find in there, uh, we're going to want to find a line that starts with site. So um, let's print our response quickly, and we'll do this. Uh, we're going to comment out these two lines for the time being. Uh, we're going to read robots.txt for recipe uh, for HTTPS colon slash slash recipes dot dot lag dot info. Uh, and we are going to pop over to the debugger and let's look at what the response dot text looks like. So response text. Cool. Uh, let's just uh no let's really okay uh let's file new text file ah uh. cool. Cool, cool cool so uh let's see 
Mm, they are using Windows style sp uh, break returns, which is really vaguely annoying, but okay. Okay, so we've got this this file. Uh, we want to. Next thing we want to do is we want to. Well, let's go look at this. So the pattern we're looking for is sitemap colon space and then a bunch of uh, text that goes from the beginning of a line to the end of the line. So we'll say that line, which is going to be uh, is going to be equal to read dot search. Uh, to, to do yeah, scan through string looking for a match of the pattern. So the pattern we'll do in a second. The string is going to be response.text. Uh, let's stop the ex halt the execution here. Uh, we'll be printing a line here. And the pattern is going to be, uh, this is some uh, intro to regex here real fast. This caret symbol means the beginning of the line. We can't assume that everybody's going to have a well-formed robots.txt, so we'll check to see for either an uppercase or a lowercase s. Um, and then we will make a match group. Eh, no, we'll just do dot plus and then the end of the line. Uh, dot matches any character. Uh, dot plus matches any character continually, and we're looking for something that ends at uh, the end of the line. So we'll go through, we'll run this program. Line's none. Um, because... Let's try this. Uh, yeah, I want to start... Oh, let's kill both of these because I accidentally just started the program a second time. Cool. Hey, okay. Man. That did not get what I wanted. Do I want read out match? Regex is uh, always exciting. Line is none again. Okay. So we definitely want, yeah. Uh, try to apply the pattern at the start of the screen. So... Let's honestly, let's just run this real fast. Read out match. Let's... Let's see. You know, let's let's do this differently. Let's do lines is going to be equal to resp dot text dot split split lines. Let's see if that gets what we want. Yes. Okay. Cool. Let me put a breakpoint here, and we'll run this. Um, and let's look at what lines is. So lines here is an array that has every line in the robots.txt. So what we want to do is we want to find the correct line. So we want sitemap is going to be equal to lines dot to do do to do. We want to find it so. We want to filter. Uh, do, do, do we're going to have a lambda function here, which I will uh, explain. I will go through momentarily, uh, and then we want to filter lines. Cool. So. Uh, a lambda function allows us to basically just write an inline function. So we want a line where 
uh, we re.match. Uh, the beginning of it is going to be is either capital or lowercase s height map colon uh, and we're going to because a filter object is weird we're going to cast this to a list and then we're going to look at the site map so we run this again we've got an error to do missing one positional argument string uh, to do lines dot join no, no. we're Uh, do, 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 do. read up match. Oh, uh, I forgot to put the line in when I was matching this, uh, this text. That's what we were missing. Cool. So our site map is now a list that contains one element, which is the line that has our site map. So cool. We just need to extract the site map from that. Um, we can see that this string starts with sitemap space, so we can do, uh, do, do, this is, I'm going to rename this to line, because this is the line that we're looking for, and sitemap URL is going to be equal to line.split. Uh, a blank space, and then we're just going to get the last item out of the array. Cool. So we've got the sitemap URL. Now we need to make a brand. Uh, well, no, we've got the we've got the sitemap URL. Let's return this. So cool. We've got the robots.txt. We are completely ignoring most of robots.txt, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to rename this to get sitemap. Um, although you can honestly, you can just assume at a lot of situations that the base URL slash sitemap.xml is the sitemap. This is just being nice. We're pretending to read the robots.txt. Cool. So we need to understand the, the sitemap. So let's... Um, iterate, uh, let's see, uh, we'll call the, this function sitemap. We'll take the URL as a string and we're going to, uh, yield a string. Uh, or this is going to be a list of strings. Uh, I'm kind of lying here because we're going to do... Well, first we're going to actually parse it. Um, and then... Like, we want to get our element tree. Uh, and we're going to want to parse it from a string. So let's quickly hop back here. Uh, we're going to do resp again is a requests dot response. Uh, it's going to be equal to do, do equal to this line here, uh, except that it's not going to be that line there. It's just going to be the URL. Cool. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and grab this line so that I don't have to manually type it out. But basically, we're going to uh, import the element tree. So our data is going to be equal to et dot from string response dot tx, uh, txt or response dot text cool so we've got our sitemap we've got it 
as an element tree. We need to find the um, the actual elements from it. So we're going to print data dot uh, to do. There should be one second do to do do to do. Okay. So for it also has children knows over which we can iterate. You know, let's go. Let's go look at what this is. So breakpoint. We are going to say that sitemap URL is equal to get sitemap, and then we're going to uh, sitemap function with the sitemap URL. Okay, let's run the debugger again. Do, do, do. List object has no attribute split. Uh, do, do, do. Ah, okay, we want line the first element from that array. Okay, let's rerun this. Much better. Cool. Okay, so uh, our data variable. Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see. What does response.txt look like? Uh, is this okay? Do, 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 do. Let's see. So, uh, as an element, root has a tag and a dictionary of attributes. So, let's look at the tag. So this is sitemaps.org. Okay. So this is this tag. There should be function variables. Let's go back to here. So it also has children nodes over which we can iterate. Okay. So yeah, let's stop this uh, for URL or for item in data. We'll print uh, item. And man, we are going to real fast. Uh, to do, do spaces and then use spaces for format document. Uh, let's quickly install uh, auto pep eight install. It's doing weird things with my spacing and I don't like it. Much better. <laughs> Okay, so we'll uh, pause iteration or we'll pause execution on this. Let's run this. What does an item look like? Uh, item. It's a sitemap URL. Um, does it have. Oh, hey, hey, nope, that's, uh, let's iterate over this. Okay, so it's an element object. So we would want to print child.tag or um, item.tag and item.attribute. Let's go item.tag item dot attribute uh we'll just run this hmm uh let's see do 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 do, do. 
How do I, real fast, okay, children are nested so we can access specific child nodes by index. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, because our URL is the first in this, uh, let's run this real fast. That is the loc tag, cool, dot text. We'll run this one more time and we should finally have what we're looking for. Yes, we have the URL. Okay, so uh, we're going to do this as a generator function. So what a generator function is, um, let's see, this is now just outputting a string, uh, to do, 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 but we need generator string, and then I need to quick fix from typing import generator. So a generator function allows you to write a function that you can iterate on. Um, so what we can do is for URL in sitemap URL or in sitemap for the sitemap URL, we can print our URL and we can run this file, uh, to, to do too few arguments for typing generator. We're just going to take the typing off of this because that's going to be easier. Uh, we're going to run this again. Cool. So now we have a function that will get our URLs for all of our recipes by putting in the root URL of this website. So we need to unindent this. We're going to no longer scrape this hard-coded URL, but we're going to scrape this URL we're going to clear this out and we're going to uh, go look over here and we're going to run this. And we're going to get all of our recipes automatically. Now you'll notice that I did that really, really fast, way faster than a normal person could do this. So we're going to be polite and we're going to import OS here. And we're going to os.sleep. Oh, one second. Uh, do, do, do Python sleep. Uh, time.sleep. Okay. We're going to import time, uh, which comes after R. And we are going to time.sleep for, I don't know, half a second. That seems incredibly fair. Um, and we're also going to, because I'm a big fan of progress bars, I'm going to uh, import, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's, one second, let's rename this function real quick. This is going to be get sitemap URL. And then we have sitemap. Okay, cool. So we are going to wrap this sitemap.url in tqdm, uh, to do, which is actually going to be from tqdm, import tqdm. And then we are going to run this file and we're going to get rid of an error because right now it's uh this warning is coming up so we are going to import man if i can just find the home keys import lxml lxml is a a parser 
that we're going to use. So when we make our soup, we are going to tell it that we're going to use LXML. And we've got a progress bar here. And it's not a full bar. Um, TQDM doesn't know how long this, um, this generator function is going to run for, but at least it will tell us that there are four iterations and it's running. So let's go delete all the recipes and we'll do clear and then pip env run scrape. And it's going to very steadily get all of our recipes and put them in the recipe folder. We have maybe one more thing to do here, though. Uh, because right now, this is only able to scrape one website. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to just, like, I don't know, if we find other or other websites that are using this particular recipe plugin, we want to be able to um, uh, have access to that. So let's really quickly just add the ability to do pipenv run scrape uh, https colon slash slash recipes dot dot lag dot info. Uh, it's, it's not going to do anything at that for the moment, but we're going to print os dot, uh, to do, man, uh, sys dot args. That's what I wanted. Man, I imported os and everything, pqrs. So that's going to be import sys or system functions. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. We're going to hop over to run and debug. And when I run this, wow, sys has no attribute args. I have the wrong library again, don't I? Sys.argv. I do that all the time. Cool. Let's run this again. Sys.argv is going to print the arguments for our, um, our scraper. So the first argument is always going to be the name of the file. Um, so if I uh, if I do pipenv run uh, scrape, scrape is spelled with a T in it, obviously. HTTPS colon slash slash recipes dot dot lag dot info um you'll see that argv is an array with main.py because that was uh if we hop over to the pip file that's this part of the argument and then recipes dot dot lag dot info cool so we can say that instead of this being hard coded, it's going to be sys.argv. And we want the second element of the array, or the uh, instead of the zeroth element, the first element. We want this one. Cool. Let's delete our recipes one more time. And let's run our scraper. And just like magic, it's getting all of our recipes. Cool. Uh, we've been writing for 90 minutes, which is uh, an awful long time for you guys to listen to me yapping. So, and we've got a functional scraper at this point. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, I kind of forgot the the initial, you know, you guys are always welcome to ask questions. Um, but yeah, cool. Questions. What do you have for them? Uh, you are... You're unmuted now. That was amazing. Of course, I should go on my end, line by line, whatever you did. I just tried to follow <laughs> you, and it was just magic. I was trying to 
uh, see whether the GitHub you shared has this updated because it is it was by the time I checked just the hello world. So yep. now I, if I uh, check that one, I would have that one. So uh, uh, how could I have this running for something like, you know, this is just a job posting. Maybe I go for, let's say, Indeed, because I once I did something very simple with Soup4 uh, mm -hmm. this morning, and it just said bad request, and I just gave it away. I don't want to do something which is not a uh, good request. So I just didn't continue, and I was happy that I have this today. Mm, how about we go for other websites? Like, indeed, I just want to go for something for, for the purpose of the project. I don't want to go for Kaggle, something like CSV file. I don't want to start from that point. I want to start from the URL side to go for the rest. So okay. how it goes, how should I get that the beginning of the URL for a specific job post I'm looking for? Is it possible? Um, you might have better, like, uh, I know that Indeed has an API that you might be able to uh, get access to. Um, uh, but the what you'd probably want to do is, um, let's actually, let's hop over to Indeed. Uh, and let's search for something and we'll see what, what happens. So like, uh, if I search for full stack web developer uh, remote, we you can see up here that there's uh, there's a, a query. Uh, so you could, um, it, it puts the the search into the search bar or into the uh, into the URL bar. Um, so you could start with that, and that would give you this website. Uh, now let's let's look at what this website looks like without JavaScript. And honestly, that's surprisingly functional. Wow, I was not expecting that. Um, cool. So yeah, we can we can start out with this URL and then, you could inspect this page and figure out what you wanted to do with the actual data on this page. Um, now, the request probably got canned because, um, or probably got, uh, like your, your HTTP request probably got denied because um, you didn't have a valid user agent. Uh, so uh, yeah. you can send along a user agent string um, that identifies your browser. So, and you're completely, like you can just, you can lie horribly. Um, so if I make this, um, uh, one second, I have to go and check out requests, user agent. Cool, uh, so, Python requests user agent. I really wanted the uh, this, but da, 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 da. okay. So user agent is a header. Cool. Uh, so yeah, you would send along a header object with user agent. Honestly, I'm just going to copy this. Um, and we'll go and we'll uh, toss this here. Um, and clearly. This uh, this script is running in Python, and it's not actually running uh, in Firefox five on Windows NT. Uh, yeah, it's not running Firefox, <laughs> but we could pass that along with our headers equals headers, and we could just pass that along with all of our requests, and just you know casually lie about. Uh, about who we are, um, and that could get you. Uh, that could potentially get you around the um, the issue where your requests are failing, uh, and might get you a step further. Uh, also, uh, thank you. So I I want to make sure that I have this uh, latest, and so we will have. Because so far uh, on my end, for the GitHub, I'm checking. 
-hmm. for the main dot pi okay it is still is in process if name is yes. hello world so, yes um so i just pushed that up uh or pushed that change uh let's see where's that tab uh nope that is not the tab it is uh this tab so there's now a branch on this uh on this repo uh well sorry on this repo um that has the completed code um and i will move that over to the the base repo um okay really uh, yeah. thank you you're welcome cool uh any other questions All right. Well, Chain, very well done. I want to say to everybody, uh, this will be up on YouTube. I'm sure you're going to have to rewatch it. You know, this guy Shane's a genius. We we all got to take a little more time with what he's got. Um, I will say to everybody, please use your new powers ethically. <laughs> you yes. Have to, oh, what, what did Spider Man's grandfather say? Yeah. <laughs> Can you remember Shane? What, what, what was the quote? Uh, it was something like. One second. I'm great scraping ability. Become <laughs> ethical constraint, <laughs> something like that. I think that's exactly what he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that no, no, no. That that, was, that makes sense. That was fantastic. Any any closing remarks before we all head our separate ways? Um. Well, uh, I mean, as a closing remark, here's the URL to the uh, the base repo with uh, with the changes. Um. But yeah, uh, honestly, um, highly recommend Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. It is the book that taught me the basics of web scraping, uh, and it goes into some more advanced things. Uh, Al Swigart has written um, a lot of books on learning Python, and they are great. Uh, if you want to learn more about data science, uh, Four Geeks Academy has a... Um, as a machine learning program. Uh, and if you want to learn more about the web, 4 Geeks Academy is a full stack developer program. I teach in the full stack developer program. Um, and there's really great um, post, uh, post certificate support. Um, I actually, uh, I had a student reach out to me just this past week. Um, they're looking for a new job. They're going to be sitting down and talking with our career support people, so. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah.